Welcome back to another episode of The Defeationist. Why it took so long, I have absolutely no idea. Hopefully the next episode will not take as long. Good thing I can say is the next Mega Marathon will not take so fucking long to complete in the exact month because I'm probably gonna make time for it. But this time, next May, the full five, six, seven, and eight will come out, and uh, yeah. But uh, for right now, let's go ahead and get on with three. And I have uh, a little bit of some mixed opinions for three. This game is a direct sequel to Mega Man X2. X and Zeros are partners once again, just doing their daily job of destroying Mavericks and taking their names and powers. And their leader currently at this time is Dr. Kane. Yes, the very same Dr. Kane that woke X up at the beginning of Mega Man X if you read everything and read the reports at the beginning. By now the Hunters do have a headquarters. The two Hunters discover that the attacks and raids by the Maverick robots are getting a lot a lot worse and more robots are going maverick by the minute ones that apparently have been stable things really heat up though when the robotic scientist dr doppler goes maverick along with the others are the rumors of a deadly virus true and if so what would the world do if x and zero were to fall to the virus too they would probably all die because that that's not something you really want to deal with oh god oh god This game adds some features, some new to the X series, some great, some bad. For this one particular title, the gameplay and music kinda went out of control. This game is two times more difficult. Trust me people, Mega Man X3 is way harder than one or two. Although if you get good at the game, which you know, probably is a meme, you will probably get really good at the game. It depends on how you feel by the time you get to the last boss, which I will get to all of that in just a second. One nice thing to see is that Zero is now a playable character, something that will happen a lot more often from this game forward. Only bad thing is he only has one life and his usefulness is limited to simply being spare energy meter. He cannot use any of X's weapons or new enhancements, even though his beam saber is great. He cannot go through gates for bosses, which means he cannot fight any of the eight bosses. He can only fight one boss, but he will have to lose that at the end of it. It's, it's whatever. Zero is even bigger on the screen, like he's just he's just not necessary. And he doesn't even have an air dash, so I mean, why would you do that? Yes, Zero again, while being a great addition, he just he's just useless unless you really, really just want to see his you know saber animation, which is quite possibly one of the best parts about him. Each stage to the game has two enclosed rooms, pretty much. A lot of them Zero can't enter. Some contain mini bosses and some of them are usually empty. After feeding two Mavericks, however, Mr. Doppler, or Dr. Doppler, however you want to call him, would unleash bit and bite. Two of the worst, if not most annoying bosses in the franchise, and I really should not be saying this right now. This isn't the section for it. After you defeat another three Mavericks, Bite will start appearing, barring your way. Also, the first two Mavericks. The Path of Vile will open up, though this is one of the fights you can avoid, if you do not know where to go. Oh my goodness. Trust me. <laughs> this was annoying too. X starts the game with the ground dash like an X2 and an X Buster. And can attain 3 levels of power. However, I found that charging up can be a little more non-beneficial in this game. Considering that some of the enemies attack a little quicker than what they do. Also, I also noticed that most of the bosses do change their attack patterns and they change everything based on where their life bar is or they change how they are. Which again, I'm going to get to it in just very shortly. The 
The grind is actually trying to figure out the weaknesses of the various bosses that you actually have to fight in this game. Some of which are very complicated to figure out their weakness and or their strengths against certain tactics. This game actually has the worst figuring out that there ever was. To the point where I'm not gonna do it this time. I'm not gonna tell you the weaknesses of the boss. I want you to pull your hair out yourself. That being said, the grind is figuring out everything you can and trying not to kill somebody in the process. Trust me, trust me, it's a lot harder than what it is because if you don't know, some of the things in this game are really, really annoying to the point where I honestly wanted to cut this game off and just say fuck it and go right to Mega Man X4 and call it a day. But instead I got through it and I actually beat this game completely. But not at the cost of some of my hair. I'm not going bald completely, I think. No, I was already going bald. I'm just joking. But like for real, this game does have some features into it that doesn't make any sense considering that the games that came before it actually kind of had. So pretty much like the other games, the previous ones in this series, like one and two, you do have various collectibles in this game. Some of which are secret, some of which are really cool. Prime example, you do have the ability to collect all the armor pieces and add an extra chip. That being said, the chips are some of the best parts in any Mega Man game. Prime example, you can get the charge shot chip, which does help your charge shot. The leg one, which gives you a double dash. The head one, which helps you find extra items. And or you can get the gold one, which adds all of the parts together. But you gotta go to the final sets of levels for them. Also, you can also find extra ride armors throughout the game. So you can use the ride armor platforms. Because of this, you have so much more collectibles in this game. It is astonishing. How much stuff do you have in this game that you can do? So you finally get to the last level, Doppler Stage 3. And then you have a good moment to look at Sigma, like always, in the face and go, Hey, Sigma, I had to deal with some of the most bullshit I've ever dealt with in any fucking game. That is called Mega Man X. You probably gonna have to cue my ranting, you know, intro real quick. Oh, oops! What? Where do I begin on this rant? Okay, first things first. Why did they increase the damage scaling in this game? It is some of the worst shit I have ever had to deal with in the Mega Man franchise. The first game, the damage was, you know, just okay. Second game, you're like, okay, it's a little bit more, but, you know, you can still survive a good time and actually, you know, beat a boss. The third game, you go to Toxic Seahorse, and you actually go to Toxic Seahorse first. He's going to beat the shit out of you consistently unless you actually know how to fight him, okay? Other than that, say you're new to the game. You don't know how to fight these bosses. Jesus Christ, this is the worst shit I've ever seen in my life when it comes to the damage scaling and how much or how easily the boss can change up their attack pattern in the middle of the boss fight, especially if you get the help down. There are things in this game that actively piss me off. Now, I'ma go through some of the bosses too. The centipede in Neon Tiger stage, you gotta hit the head, but it also has the ability to shoot at you and it can get real tedious. The octopus from Toxic Seahorse stages is just is stupid. The tank from Tunnel Rhino stage is genuinely stupid and annoying. Freaking Bit is literally one of the most annoying bosses I have ever had to fight. Literally, just don't stand on the ground to fight him, but if you do, he, he just moves too goddamn fast and it's really annoying to try to fight him. Okay? But, hey, you can do that. It's real easy. Frost Shield kills him, so you don't have to fight him. Bite, bite is why he is a lot easier. He also hits way too goddamn hard, and it's very annoying to try to fight this man. Vile, Vile can get 
broken when it comes to AI, but once he's out of his robot, his right armor, he actually genuinely can get really agitating to just fight. The second time you fight but in Bite, you fight him as a fusion, and that shit is just plain annoying to deal with. I guarantee you. Sigma. Good God, the first form. While it is a little easier, it has some of the most unpredictable hitboxes I've ever seen in my life when it comes to, you know, Sigma Kaiser. Jesus fucking Christ. If you do not charge up your X Buster with the Hyper Cannon, you're not beating this boss. It literally is the worst boss I have ever seen and the hitbox to hit him is so fucking annoying and so small that it is not funny at this point. I just don't care at this point. Oh my god. Now, the last boss is definitely still Sigma in one of the worst Sigma boss fights I've ever fought in my life in which literally could take you fucking forever to kill him because you have to charge it up or you it's just it's just so fucking annoying. That being said, to go over everything, to make sure everything is good to go, there is a lot of stuff in this game that you can go over, but while this is a good game, I, uh, I, I'll, I'll talk about it in, uh, I'll talk about it in a second. That being said, wow, out of the original three, this is my least favorite out of the three because of the nonsense that this game has. I honestly have to say that I prefer the first one or the second one than playing this over again. That being said, I would have to say watch a speedrun. You know, that would be my rating. Just watch a speedrun. That would make your life so much easier and my life so much easier. That being said, move along. Why are you still here? What, what are you doing here? Get out. I'm trying to pose. Can't believe you're still here. You better not still be here when I turn the camera. Hey guys, I'm really close to the camera now. As you can see, I'm super close to try to see some stuff. You know, hopefully there's no boogies in my nose. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, of course. And like I said, I'm sorry for the delay. I was also moving. So, you know, finally done moving and settling in my house. Not 100% done the house, we'll complete the house. But that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Jesus Christ, there are 11 of these episodes and they're going to be 3 out of 300. 11 out of 300. Uh, about a million to go. 79. Uh, three, 279. If you really... I count this one. Alright.